Hello, everybody. This is Purge, and I'm going to be going over this uh, start of this replay here. So it's kind of like a replay commentary, but we got shit stomped. So I basically just X the replay in the video right when we're about to lose really badly. Uh, so, but I felt like what I did in the early game was really valuable. So it felt like worth uploading anyways, or at least making some content about it. Now, small uh, disclaimer that I cheated slightly because I random. So I have a extra fairy fire and an extra mango that I'm supposed to which means uh, more damage, health, and more uh, HP regen. But the the core point is here. I could have basically two mangoes, Ironwood Branch, Fairy Fire. And then this would be gone, obviously, or it would be a Clarity Potion. So what I'm trying to show you guys in this replay is just how valuable it is to spend your life as a five position hero that has a lot of nuke damage to zone enemy heroes. Um, this, is the, this should be the goal of a lot of five positions. Um, most it's not all five positions though some five positions are typically can be like more passive a good example would be like ancient apparition ancient apparition can't really fight people to the death very well because you have to get a chilling touch at level one and you only get to use it like once every 15 seconds so the ancient apparition does like a very slow harassment sort of situation to try to get people zoned out of lane lich however has a 125 damage nuke on a seven second cooldown so it's a really low cooldown ability you can spam it many times and it lowers the attack speed and movement speed so it allows me time to right click them when they can't right click me back which is a trade advantage so there's a lot of five positions disruptor is another good example of a, of a hero that's good at trading disruptor has a really high damage nuke the cooldown's a little bit long but it's 180 damage over 18 seconds so using thunder strike often and right clicking often is going to give you a better advantage to possibly lower their regen so um, in our defense, we got to lane against two melee heroes. Finding Night Stalker right here was like perfect circumstance because it gave us lots of time to right-click them. Now we're moving over to Contest. Small little thing here. Watch how I am attacking before I cast my spell. That's because in the short time that we're going to be going to kill him, that like in this moment right now I can't attack anyways because I've already attacked. If I start with casting a spell, it means I start my attack a little bit after. It's something I'm going over and learned out in other places. But it basically allows us to maximize our damage. And then, of course, I'm moving between every attack. I shouldn't have attacked this time. If I got in front of the uh, um, Earth Spirit, he actually ends up dead. Because I would have stopped his roll. And then he would have... Uh, we would have been able to right-click him down. But one good thing about me messing that up, in a way, is that I don't get first blood. But he's also extremely zoned. And he's going to have to use a salve now to recoup his HP. Which is probably what he's going to end up doing. And another thing is that I use so many Frost Blasts that what I want to do now is use a Clarity. This is a really good value moment to use a Clarity. I'm only missing 160 mana, but I don't really want to use a Mango to try to offset this. Because Mangoes are better as like a last resort. Clarity Potions, however, are cheaper by far. It's 50 gold versus 70, and Mangoes only give you 110 mana. Clarities end up giving you 6 times 30, which is 180. So you're getting quite a bit more mana for much less gold. And this is also a moment we're going to be running back to the creep wave anyways. So having my clarity going is great. And another thing I did right here is with that starting gold, and you don't necessarily always want to do this because sometimes you need to spend more time fighting. I just flew out more clarity potions. Or flew out, uh, walked out very slowly out more clarity potions. Because I know that this much mana is going to completely change uh, my laning stage, especially if I'm against a double melee lineup. So if it's like a lineup that's a little bit more kill likely against you, um, then maybe it's less safe to do this. But I felt pretty confident that with um, the ability to slow them, that I'm pretty consistently just going to throw a lot of nukes. Ben helping out a little bit too. He moves forward to throw out a um, a nuke. And by the way, when the Ember Spirit runs away like this, this allows you to now go attack the offlaner. So this is usually the normal thing to do as a support. You trade with the uh, four position hero, and if they get zoned, then you shift over and you get to harass the carry, or the offlane hero in this case. So, and it's important also that you come from the side. You don't want to aggro any of these creeps. So I'm going to move over here and start attacking. I don't necessarily want to nuke him here because I'm not going to get that many more right clicks on him. And realistically, I'm already fully zoning him from the way lane anyways. So I'm pretty comfortable um, just giving him right clicks. If we look at last hit so far. He's got two here. I was kind of weird by the Earth Spirit. Um, it's kind of like guessing where I would be. Now we could potentially fight to the death here. This is where I would be using mangoes, of course, if needed. But because I probably should have gotten some of these last hits here, but I wanted to go do a pull instead. Getting my clarities ready. So this is one nice thing about clarities that I can com combo with pulling. And by doing so, I am uh, basically guaranteeing 
that by the time like the enemy comes over to fight me, my mana is almost completely full anyways. I use the nuke on him, which splashes to get the last hit. It's a little greedy because it only does 50 AoE damage, but... This guy's only a mere level 1. I'm going to bring the last clarity potion back in. Because I would love to get my mana full again. I'm going to pull that so I can uh, aggro them to the range creep, and I'm going to resume pulling again. So one thing I would want to look at is probably levels. Night Stalker's last hits are actually pretty decent so far, and Ben's are maybe a little bit lower than where they should be. But uh, levels is kind of the big thing. Night Stalker's only 2.5. PL is 3. I'm 2. And if we look at the Earth Spirit, he's 1.5. So there's a lot of experience that, they end up, that they're missing right now, just because I've done a good job zoning. Earth Spirit has to run all the way back, and he's still level 1. And a lot of this is maybe Earth Spirit's fault, too. I don't know what his MMR was. He was Divine 5, so he was lower than me. But uh, the, the Zeus ended up being insane. I think he was a Smurf, pretty sure. But um, the Earth Spirit definitely was a little um, outplayed, uh, more or less. But um, the nice thing is that I, it was a really good show of principle of what you need to do to help secure your lane, basically. That was really weird. These Diagro, this one Diagro are really quickly. It's really hard to pull through here. Then I'm going to go back to fighting again. Because again, this is going to buy time for my PL. Now has quite a few more last hits than the Night Stalker. I wish his last hits were a little bit higher. I'm going to nuke that to lower his attack speed. To ho hopefully he doesn't get the last hit. He still gets it. The Earth Spirit should be fighting me generally. But because he has no regen, he doesn't want to do that either. So this is like a weird place for the Earth Spirit to be in. That Because I did such a good job trading hits with him. And also these two guys never caught me by myself and got lots of hits in. Then it never really left me in a position where I got harassed much at all. And I still have tons of regen left. And tons of mana as well. This is a pretty big wave pushing though, so what we're going to do is do a side pull. Unfortunately the, the new wave came at the same time, so it's a little bit hard, so I'm going to go side pull the next one anyways. But this guy was here to mess it up, so unfortunately it doesn't work out. So this wave continuing to push is kind of a big problem though, because even though we have a level advantage, ideally what we would have done is been able to recontrol the creep wave at this point. It hasn't really been quite possible yet. I commend Night Stalker for still getting pretty good last hits, so I, I genuinely thought I zoned them a little bit better. I felt like we were completely dumpstering for the fact that I was level 3 here, and uh, Night and Earth Spirit's only level 1. I would have loved to, to potentially dive and kill, and frankly, I think we might have been able to get away with it, potentially. But one of the issues is that... Um, I tried to click that on Ben. I think we should have gone for this kill, frankly. And I think we would have been able to if Ben had gone in, because with Frost, even if he aggroes tower, it's not that big of a deal, because I would have been able to uh, reduce 30% of the damage he takes from the tower. And even if he does have to spend a lot of regen, I'd be able to back him up, and this guy's only level 2 as well, so I feel like we probably could have killed Night Stalker, or maybe gotten a lot closer. It would have cost me all my mangoes, but and maybe that went to enough mana, actually. But um, it doesn't quite work out, unfortunately. But I channeled a lot of uh, mana, to uh, denying them some last hits, and it's basically just giving us a decent start for PL, which feels nice. And most of that is just, again, oh, I messed up really bad here. I definitely should have been able to get that one. So our nice Stalker will probably rotate over. Unfortunately, it was just a little bit too much damage for me. And he also got the courier here. This felt a lot better in my mind than when I watch it back live, I gotta say. His last hits are actually pretty close here. Then I did a smoke TP to the mid lane since I was dead and respawning. Uh, very importantly that when you do this, by the way, that um, ideally you bring a ward and a smoke. And they actually do have an observer ward here that would have spotted my rotation. So. When you do this respawn TP, it can be pretty nice because you can do a combo thing. You TP here, you smoke, and then as you're wrapping around, you put an observer ward as you approach, and this is going to make it a little bit easier to guarantee the death, because then you get to see everything. And then you just, the other thing that's really important is you also need to check to see how your lane partner is doing, or the, the mid laner. So I checked him to make sure that his spells were on cooldown. He pinged that he needed a little bit of time for avalanche, and then I communicated when it was time to go in, basically, which was set here. I'm going to use armor myself because I'm closer to tanking the tower. And then we kind of just right-click down the Zeus together. 
and ends up being a very successful kill. I get myself, so his HP's full, and he's gonna use his haste to try to go get a kill. I don't think we spotted the Earth Spirit, actually. Unfortunately, we'd already used Avatos at this point. Oh, that was unfortunate. I forgot about that, where he ends up barely getting away. So that part felt bad, but um, either way, our carry has still gotten more last hits than their offlaner has. So I have more or less well pressured, and I also have decent levels as a result. I wish we got a little bit more kills, and maybe we could have coordinated a little bit better, me and Ben, to or Merlini, to um, get more kills in lane. Or maybe if he has like Orb of Venom or something, it'd be more possible, but... Um, it just went a little bit too rough, unfortunately. So I gave him more regen, of course. Now the only downside to playing like this is that it ends up gimping yourself a little bit, uh, which is gonna make it a little bit harder for you to transition, usually. Um, oh my god, he actually has so many last hits. I wonder if it's a smurf, guys. Oh, interesting. Level 23, hmm, weird. Um, And like moments like this as well, if I if I have boots instead, maybe I can get forward and get a disable off on the Night Stalker and we can actually kill him. Um, kills like that would have been a really big deal, but he's actually, again, he's still got pretty good last hits, surprisingly. I was hoping we would have zoned him more successfully, but still go ends up okay. Um, so that's basically what I just wanted to go over, just showing um, how much pressure you can put on your opponents if you do the right thing. It helps if they misplay a little bit, and um, but... From what I saw, I didn't really get super out of position. I didn't really give them a lot of opportunities to ever have an advantage. The first one was that, like, another thing that was really small, probably, that's probably worth talking about. A lot of you guys are going to end up starting games, and you're just going to stand here and look at the rune. I don't like doing this, because then anybody can see you coming, basically. If anybody walks in normally, they're going to see you there, and they're not going to engage. But because I hid in the trees, and we kind of walked out at a lucky moment, we ended up catching... Night Stalker lowering his health a bunch, and then we ended up trading heavily against our Spirit, lowering his health a bunch, and just doing those small moves gets him behind and makes him not feel comfortable to fight. Whereas instead, if the, we start the lane level one, they could both run at me right away with Orb of Venom on Earth Spirit and Night Stalker just chasing me with a void once in a while. It would have put me in a bad place, but instead I had the pressure going on them the whole time. So um, you have to, like, a lot of this is maybe just saying play better in the sense that you need to read what circumstances you're not in trouble more than them but you have to be really ready to fight people especially when you have an advantage so just very important that you have the items that allow you to do this like i didn't need as much health regen as i did but having all of that mana really helped a lot all, uh, the clarity potions that kind of thing because then i could have used my hero skill which is very spammable to try to limit their um, success in the lane which we did uh, we're eight minutes in pl's almost level seven night stalker isn't quite six yet not that it's that big, big of a deal. He still lasts it pretty well. But Earth Spirit's also pretty underfarmed. Um, only only level 3 here. So I've got almost a full level on him. So we definitely won our lane. We ended up getting completely stomped by the Zeus. He outplayed the shit out of us consistently. But uh, I thought I wanted to go over this really quick just to show you guys a good example of a laning stage. That, again, the major thing I messed up was I needed to pull a little bit more carefully. to um, And maybe like do a stack pull first. If I did a stack pull first instead, then I could have probably siphoned off like a half level, if not more, and more last hits from them. Because when we got that big creep wave under the tower, that ended up being a little bit too catastrophic, unfortunately. So, okay, that is the video. Hope that was helpful. Goodbye.